Hello friends, welcome to or welcome back to the Eerie Fairy Tales. My name is Letty. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have some cold, wintry, snowy recommendations for you. Some of these I've read, some I have not yet, but let me know, is it cold where you guys are at? It is getting pretty cold here. I'm going to be doing some immersive reading with these wintry reads here because the geniuses who did the renovation on this house didn't think that any of the bedrooms needed AC or heating, which, you know, the heater is more appropriate for now, but my room is absolutely freezing and you think, Letty, just get a space heater. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. But the same geniuses who didn't think they needed to put a mini splitter heater in the rooms also didn't think to put the grounder prong outlets in the room. So I have three outlets in here. Yeah, only three, not even four. And none of them have the ability to use a plug that have the grounder prong. So I can't use anything that has the three prong plug. So I can't even plug in a space heater. So when it's 40 degrees outside, yeah. And then I'm on the corner of the house and there's no attic. So, oh my gosh, you guys. Sometimes I go to bed wearing two long pairs of socks, a pair of leggings, a pair of sweats, a bodysuit tank top, a long sleeve shirt, two sweaters. And then if I'm just hanging out reading, I'm wearing that plus a beanie and gloves and I'm under the covers and the blankets. And it's still cold. Man. I really need to figure something out. I mean, it really does help with the immersive reading aspect though of these books, I guess. So um, that's a positive. Okay, so the first four books I have to share with you, I have read and I do have a wrap up for each of these books. So I will link those below. And as usual, I'll have any links and timestamps down in the description. So the first one is The Secret History by Donna Tartt, and this one starts out, I don't know if the whole thing is set in the winter because it is set at school. I think they go through the whole year, you know, different seasons, but it starts out in the winter and it is so cold. The descriptions of the snow and how bitterly cold it is. Oh, I think I read this in April. Yeah, I read it in April. So I'll have my April wrap up linked below. So, you know, not too cold in April where I live. I live in like the Northern California area, but I felt the cold down to my bones. Oh, she is so good at writing. And if you're not familiar with this story, we actually start out in the prologue and it hooks you from the very beginning. At least it did for me. And in the prologue, you get to find out that somebody is murdered and there's a group of people standing over him. And it starts out like that. It's like, okay, well, you know how it ends, but you don't know how it got like that. And so she is so good at building tension. This book, I think, is almost 600 pages long. I did tab quite a bit. There we go. I tabbed quite a bit in this. Really good writing. She holds the tension all throughout the book, which is really quite a feat because she has long chapters. So heads up on that. Um, all of the chapters are 40 pages long and the middle and last chapters are like 100 pages long, but she does help you out. She kind of does page breaks. Um, so kind of like, kind of like that. She'll have like a line. So there are places where you could like visually stop, you know, and like take a break in between reading. But in this, we follow some students at a college and they end up murdering one of their friends, but you don't know what brought that about. And the whole time I was reading it, I was like, oh, is this it? Is this going to be the thing that finally, you know, gets them to murder him? And like, what happens exactly? And like how it actually went down is absolutely wild. Highly recommend this if you have not read it yet. And my next cold, snowy, wintry type of recommendation that I read is Ascension by Nicholas Binge. And this is a sci-fi mystery thriller with a little bit of horror. Uh, it's like a blend of quite a few different genres. I really enjoyed this. I read it in June. I'll have that wrap up linked below. And in this, we have this mountain that just appears all of a sudden in the middle of the ocean. So they send people expeditions to go figure out what's going on. Well, there's really weird things going on here and it kind of messes with time. And you discover that while you're reading it because a lot of the writing, um, I think the, is the whole thing done through letters? 
it's like you find the letters that the person who is on the mountain that he's written all these things and he's trying to like describe what's going on and it really messes with all of the people's minds they have a hard time distinguishing like reality versus fiction they have a hard time trusting each other trusting themselves um, there is definitely a survival aspect to this and they end up running into some creatures on the mountain as well and what is fascinating to me is that they don't know really what's going on but they're driven by curiosity to find out but it's even more than that it's like they almost become overcome with this drive to get to the very top regardless of how they're going to survive or not like they even get to a point where they're like yeah we may not survive but we don't care we need to get to the very top and what's cool about this also is it does reference the myth of sisyphus if you're not familiar sisyphus is uh, i think that's a greek myth and he was basically he cheated death and the god of the underworld was pissed off about this and so he basically doomed him to push a boulder up a really steep mountain just for eternity so basically sisyphus pushes a boulder up the mountain as soon as he gets to the top it rolls back down and he has to go do it over and over and over again for eternity and so it references that so i like it when books have like a deeper philosophical meaning to that i really enjoyed this i highly recommend it it was a five star my next cold snowy wintry recommendation that i read i just read in december so i will have my december wrap-up linked below in case you missed it and that is no exit by taylor adams and this is a thriller and this is really fast paced it all takes place on one night and we follow a young lady who is driving through this horrible snowstorm to go visit her sick mother in the hospital well she gets to a point on the road where it literally becomes impossible to drive on she's fortunate enough to pull over and she is near a rest stop so she goes into the rest stop and she sees a few cars that are parked out there a few people are inside and they're all like playing cards playing on their phone talking amongst each other and she finds out from one of them that they were able to get a little phone service out there because of course the phones don't work inside the building and there's no landline she's like okay let me go out there and try to see if my phone will work and she goes out there while she's out there she sees that there is a van out there and the little girl's hand pops up behind a cage and she's like oh no somebody has kidnapped this little girl and so she goes back inside she has to play it cool act like she doesn't know that she saw that because she wants to figure out who did it and she is determined to save this little girl but things get real crazy real wild and there are some twists and turns in here and it gets bloody it's suspenseful and this is a really fun read I highly recommend it and my next recommendation I also read in December, so that will be in that same wrap up with No Exit, and that is The 12 Days of Murder by Andraina Cordani, and this is a murder mystery. And think of this like the 12 Days of Christmas song mixed with the murder mystery dinner, and only uh, people actually start dying, kind of in the vein of Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. I wouldn't say like it's a direct comparison, but it's pretty much in the vein of that. And you have a couple different timelines going on. Um, you have 12 years prior where they had put on one of these murder mystery dinners. Well, one of their friends, it's a group of friends, um, we'll use that term loosely because there's a lot of drama involved here and one of their friends ends up going missing. They don't know what happened. They don't know if he like took off because he really wanted to go missing. Uh, like he wanted to start over his life without telling anybody. Did he do it as a prank and then something bad happened, like an accident happened, or did one of them do something? So there's a lot of suspicion and blame being thrown around, and it kind of breaks the group up for a while. Well, 12 years later, the sister of the guy who went missing is like, you know what? We just need to get the group back together and let's have another murder mystery dinner. And she puts it on at this mansion in the middle of nowhere. And of course, no cell service is available out there. You have a cold, snowy, isolated setting and this does take place over Christmas so it's a good read to read during that season I mean really anytime but you know if you are more a seasonal reader I think you would enjoy it over the Christmas season and in this current timeline you have the group of friends who all get their little packets in their room of their character and the roles they're gonna play and the clues that they're supposed to give out and 
well, it turns out that somebody actually ends up dead. And they're like, yeah, what's going on? This isn't actually supposed to happen. And then one by one, they start getting picked off and they're freaking out because they don't know who did it, but also they're scared to be alone. So they also want to stay together and it just gets <laughs> crazy and wild. And it's kind of fun to figure out like who might have done it. Uh, because part of the dual timeline aspect, when you go back in time each time, you go to focus on a different character. And so you kind of get more insight into their perspective and their possible motives on why they may have been involved in either of the two mysteries, because you have two of those going on. You have the friend who disappeared 12 years ago, and then you have the current timeline where people are just being picked off one by one. This was really fun. I highly recommend it. Okay, so the next 13 books I have to share with you that have a cold, snowy, wintry atmosphere or setting, I have not read these, so we'll go over the synopses together. I think that's the plural for synopsis, right? Synopses? I think so. The first book I have to share with you is actually a trilogy, and that's the Winter Night Trilogy, and that is by Catherine Arden. This is the first one, Bear and the Nightingale, and then we have the second one, The Girl in the Tower. And the third one is The Winter of the Witch. And these are set in Moscow, so definitely a very cold atmosphere. And this is like a dark lyrical fairy tale. And you may have seen this in my recent haul video, but before I read this trilogy, I'm going to read this book. Um, this is the Illustrated Russian Tales because this book is based on Russian folklore. So I'd like to get acquainted with the actual tales. And I'm assuming because this is Russian folklore, this probably has some cold atmosphere as well. But that's not like officially part of the list. So we'll start out with Bear and the Nightingale. And winter lasts most of the year at the edge of the Russian wilderness. And in long nights, Vasilisa and her siblings love to gather by the fire to listen to their nurses' fairy tales. Above all, Vasya loves the story of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon. Wise Russians fear him, for he claims unwary souls, and they honor the spirits that protect their homes from evil. Then Vasya's widowed father brings home a new wife from Moscow. Fiercely devout, Vasya's stepmother forbids her family from honoring their household spirits. But Vasya fears what this may bring, and indeed, misfortune begins to stalk the village. But Vasya's stepmother only grows harsher, determined to remake the village to her liking and to groom her rebellious stepdaughter for marriage or a convent. As the village's defenses weaken and evil from the forest creeps near, Vasilisa must call upon dangerous gifts she has concealed to protect her family from a threat sprung to life from her nurse's most frightening tales. So if that sounds fun, you know, I love a good fairy tale. That's part of the reason why I named my channel The Eerie Fairy Tales. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to binge all three of these together. Okay, the next three cold, snowy, wintry books on my TBR are going to be novellas. I have mentioned these somewhat recently, but I'll go ahead and cover them again because they're appropriate for this video. And that is At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. And in this, we have a fantastical otherworld, unearthly creatures, and cosmic forces. And this terrifying novella, an expedition to Antarctica, goes horribly wrong when the explorers stumble upon some ancient ruins, unearthing a lost alien civilization and unleashing monstrous forces they cannot hope to control. And the next novella is also set in Antarctica, and that is Who Goes There by John W. Campbell. And this is the novella that the movie The Thing is based on. A single throw of the tarp revealed the thing. The ice had melted somewhat in the heat of the room, and it was clear and blue as thick, good glass. It shone wet and sleek under the harsh light of the unshielded globe above. The room stiffened abruptly. It was face up there on the plain, greasy planks of the table. The broken half of the bronze ice axe was still buried in the queer skull. Three mad, hate-filled eyes blazed up with a living fire, bright as a fresh spilled blood from a face ringed with a writhing, lonesome nest of worms. Blue, mobile worms that crawled where hair should grow. And the next snowy novella is Moon of the Crusted Snow, and that's by Wabgashig Rice. And this is an indigenous post-apocalyptic or apocalyptic kind of story. 
As one city collapses, another is reborn. With winter looming, the small northern Ashinabi community goes dark, cut off from the power and communication with no foreseeable resolution. Only very few residents truly realize the community's shortfalls. When unexpected visitors arrive, escaping the crumbling society to the south, tensions rise and allegiances are divided. The harsh winter months pass slowly and the food supply dwindles as the death toll and panic rise. But the greatest threat to the survival of the reserve might come from the community itself. And the next two books are going to be like murder mysteries. And the first one is Snow Falling on Cedars by David Gutterson. San Pedro Island, north of the Puget Sound, is a place so isolated that no one who lives there can afford to make enemies. But in 1954, a local fisherman is found suspiciously drowned, and a Japanese American named Kabuyo Miyamoto is charged with this murder. In the course of the ensuing trial, it becomes clear that what is at stake is more than one man's guilt. For on San Pedro, memory grows as thickly as cedar trees and the fields of ripe strawberries. Memories of a charmed love affair between a white boy and a Japanese girl who grew up to become Kabuyo's wife. Memories of land desired, paid for, and lost. Above all, San Pedro is haunted by the memory of what happened to its Japanese residents during World War II, when an entire community was sent into exile while its neighbors watched. And the next murder mystery type of book is Snowdrift by Helene Turston. One winter night, 28-year-old Detective Inspector Embla Nystrom receives a phone call that sends her reeling. It's been 14 years since her best friend disappeared. That Emla recognizes her voice before the call disconnects. Emla is thrilled to learn that Lolo is still alive, but before she can dive into the case, a relative calls her to ask for help. A man has been found shot dead in one of the guest houses he and his wife manage. When Embla arrives on the scene, she is shocked to see the dead man is Milo Stavik, one of the last people seen with Lolo. And as Embla soon learns, the same night that Milo was shot, his brother Luca was also killed. With help from a handsome local detective and his police dog in training, Embla launches an investigation into the Stavik brothers, hoping it will bring her closer to finding Lolo and putting an end to her terrible nightmares. And the next one, I just discovered that there was a random bookmark in it. I got it from a little free library, so <laughs> that's kind of cute. And this one is like a survival type of story, and it's Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. I always love it when they include a map. Cold Mountain is an extraordinary novel about a soldier's perilous journey back to his beloved at the end of the Civil War, at once a magnificent love story and a harrowing account of one man's long walk home. Based on local history and family stories passed down by the author's great-great-grandfather, Cold Mountain is the tale of a wounded soldier, Inman, who walks away from the ravages of the war and back home to his pre-war sweetheart, Ada. Inman's odyssey through the devastated landscape of the soon-to-be-defeated South interweaves with Ada's struggle to revive her father's farm with the help of an intrepid young drifter named Ruby. As their long separated lives begin to converge at the close of the war, Inman and Ada confront the vastly transformed world they've been delivered. Next up we have a couple thrillers and the first one is Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. Eight strangers, one killer, nowhere left to run. When Krista joins a tour group heading deep into the Rocky Mountains, she's hopeful this will be her chance to put the ghost of her past to rest. But when a bitterly cold snowstorm sweeps the region, the small group is forced to take shelter in an abandoned hunting cabin. Despite the uncomfortably claustrophobic quarters and rapidly dropping temperature, Krista believes they'll be safe as they wait out the storm. She couldn't be more wrong. Deep in the night, their tour guide goes missing, only be to discover the following morning, his severed head impaled on a tree outside the cabin. Terrified and completely isolated by the storm, 
Krista finds herself trapped with eight total strangers. One of them kills for sport, and they're far from finished. As the storm grows more dangerous and the number of survivors dwindles one by one, Krista must decide whom she can trust before this frozen mountain becomes her tomb. And the next survival adventure thriller story is Breathless by Amy McCullough. There's a killer on the mountain. Journalist Cecily Wong is in over her head. She's come to Mansulu, the eighth highest peak in the world, to interview internationally famous mountaineer Charles McVeigh on the last leg of a record-breaking series of summits. She's given up everything for this story, her boyfriend, her life savings, the peace she's made with her climbing failures in the past, but it's a career-making opportunity. It could finally put her life back on track. But when one climber dies in what everyone else assumes is a freak accident, she fears their expedition is in danger. And by the time a second climber dies, it's too late to turn back. Stranded on a mountain in one of the most remote regions in the world, she'll have to battle more than the elements in a harrowing fight for survival against a killer who is picking them off one by one. And the next novel is a self-published sci-fi horror and it's called Pina by Bernadette Richards. It's Pina or Pina, I'm not sure on the pronunciation. I would think Pina. I'm not sure, what do you guys think? One minute, Nick was skiing in the Alps, and now he is lost in the frozen alien world of Celeste. He thinks his only problem is finding a way home, but he comes to realize in this strange place that when the thaw arrives, beasts known as the Pina will wake. Nick's disorientation in this parallel realm is the least of his concerns. When Nick is captured and trapped in a horrifying peanut nest, he will learn the truth of these frightening creatures. Together with his new enigmatic friend Sim and two other humans who stumbled into Celeste, Nick struggles to get home. But when they discover that multiple portals exist between Celeste and Earth, they must find a way to close them before the penis slip through. Can he and the others escape? How far will they go to outrun these body thieves and a fate worse than death? And the last cold, icy recommendation I have is a gothic horror, and that is A Haunting in the Arctic by C.J. Cook. And this is an absolutely beautiful cover. And this one I found out about from Sophie over at In Sophie's Books. So thanks so much for this recommendation. I had not heard of this book before, so I'm very excited to get to this. 1901. On board the Orman, a whaling ship battling through the unforgiving North Sea, a woman awakens. Attacked and dragged there against her will, it's just her and the crew. And they're all owed something only she can give them. 1973. Decades later, when the ship is found still drifting across the ocean, it's deserted. Just one body is left on board, his face and feet mutilated, his cabin locked from the inside. Everyone else has vanished. Now, as urban explorer Dominique travels into the near permanent darkness of the northernmost tip of Iceland to the final resting place of the Ormond's wreck, she's determined to uncover the ship's secrets. But she is not alone. Something is here with her, and it's seeking revenge. Okay, friends, that will wrap it up for my icy, snowy, cold, wintry type of recommendations and TBR. Have you read any of these? What did you think? Have you added any new ones to your TBR? Are there any not on this list that you would like to share and recommend? I would also love to hear those. And if you've made it this far and you'd like to leave me an emoji, uh, go ahead and leave a snowflake, a snowman, anything cold winter weather related. That would be great. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.